with a look inside Maricopa Community Colleges, this is Maricopa Now. Here are some of the stories. This former Phoenix College student and rapper is using his voice to fulfill another's lifelong dream. Girl power, meet this alumna who's succeeding in a male-dominated field. And we'll celebrate student success at the Maricopa Community College's Hispanic Convocation. And there's so much more on this edition of Maricopa Now. Now here's your host, Lisa Aquafreda. Welcome to our show. We're here at Studio A at Scottsdale Community College. One former Phoenix College student is lending his voice to a boy who has a dream of becoming a rapper. This inspirational story proves that sometimes the quietest voices are the ones with the biggest impact. Trap House was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona, where he took his love for rap and hip hop seriously. I went to Phoenix College. I went for music technology. I learned the business. I learned how to engineer music. I got as high as number two on the independent billboard charts on my own two feet. I get a call from uh, the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. They tell me about a young man that's born, um, you know, without a lower jaw, never tasted food before completely mute that hope to be a rapper. After Phoenix College, Trap continued to pursue his dream, but little did he know he was about to pay it forward and help someone else live their dream too. His name is Isaiah, a local teenager that loves hip hop, writes raps, and dreams of becoming a famous rapper one day like Trap House. The two collaborated together here with Iron Daniels, Trap's former PC instructor, to record and produce Oxygen to Fly. The lyrics are touching. Trap House is Isaiah's voice. The song is about Isaiah's challenges, living with a serious medical condition. The oxygen needed to flow through my body. The haters can't stop me, the life of the party. The ultimate thing that I, I hoped for was to just make sure that, you know, it was what he imagined in his mind. Overnight, their song, Oxygen to Fly, went viral. When the video dropped, we were on our way to Texas. We were going to South by Southwest to speak on the panel out there. So before we left, um, you know, like in four minutes, it had 100,000 views, like it was moving. By the time Trap and Isaiah landed in Texas, the video had one million views. No sooner than landing and stepping off the plane, Trap and Isaiah were already recognized. The response has been just also amazing and, and inspirational. It's inspired a lot of people. Iron is touched by what Trap and Isaiah are doing. And now you have a student that not only makes money at what he does, he wants to pay it forward. When I was teaching at Phoenix College, you know, one of the things that I would say, like on the last day of class, is that you're going to meet someone that's going to remind you of yourself. Iron says that's trap. I don't care what the people say. I don't ever He's say passionate about music, the business, and giving back. Trap works with Isaiah, motivating and mentoring him. They performed all over for a number of celebrities. All of these big stars, and they're telling him that he's the next big thing. And um, I think that energized and charged him up. And, um, you know, for me to be one of his instruments, to be his voice, it, um, it's an overwhelming feeling. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's great. And the social media views have gone through the roof. I think it's around 40 million now. People now know about Isaiah's story and the most powerful message of all. A beautiful message that should resonate with everyone. From Maricopa Now, I'm Lisa Aquafreda. A recent grad from the Industrial Design and Technology program at Gateway Community College shows us what girl power is all about. Jackie Balbuena tells us how this fearless alumna is succeeding in a male-dominated field. Liliana Gutierrez was the first in her family to graduate from college. She graduated from the Industrial Technology and Design program at Gateway Community College, something that she says happened unplanned. I was going for human resources, 
and that didn't come my eye. I mean, it was something that I just chose because I, I didn't know what, what I wanted to do. She says it was 3D printing that sparked an interest in the industrial design and technology program at Gateway. But once she started taking classes, something else appealed to her. I got introduced into the machines and I started liking it. Liliana says she made it her mission not to let her gender define her future. I had a lot of people telling me that as a girl I wasn't going to be able to make it in this industry, that I wasn't going to get hired, that I wasn't going to find a job, that it was going to be basically worthless because I was a girl and I was a Latina. Instructor Harry Jameson believes there should be more girls like Liliana. He believes they bring diversity and a new perspective to the trade. Because they're better at it, they're more observant, they're more um, meticulous about the way they do things. Liliana says her instructors and male classmates encouraged and helped her succeed in the program. Says they help you if you have a question or something. They're the ones who help you and teach you and they get you better along the way. Liliana says that her instructors went above and beyond the classroom to help her succeed. Chris Bridgman, who's actually has recommended me to different shops out there, and thanks to him, I found the place that I'm actually working at right now, American Aerospace Technical Castings. She has a great personality, and the companies seem to like her, and they keep training her and moving her forward. Bridgman says that the trade of industrial design and technology has evolved over the years and he encourages everyone to see what it has to offer. They might think that it's like a dirty job or something like that when it's quite different nowadays with the equipment that we have is uh, very high-end state-of-the-art equipment. Students like Liliana are learning how to design and manufacture products like these using the latest technology. Liliana encourages other girls interested in the program to try it out because she says the career options are endless. Inspection, you can go to 3D printing, you can go to programming, you can go to 3D designing. I mean, it depends what you like and what you're into. According to Bridgman, there's a high demand in manufacturing and employers seeking graduates like Liliana. There's manufacturing all over the world, all over the country. Uh, right now we have a strong uh, demand for employers looking for uh, our students. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Jackie Balbuena. Coming up on Maricopa Now, students and veterans come together to preserve their stories of service. Stay with us. We offered one of the first automotive technology degrees in the Southwest. To date, we've seen thousands of graduates enter their dream field, the automotive industry. Yeah, I guess you can call us dream builders. Let us help you build yours. Because as you can see, we've got more dreamers on the way. Way to go, Mia. discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. The Veterans Heritage Project connects students with veterans to record and preserve their stories of service to our nation. These stories have been published in a book titled Since You Asked. The project was carried out by Maricopa Community College students and culminated with a book signing event. Deanne Kincaid brings us the story. The Veterans Heritage Project honors our veterans and help students to become future leaders. Students are interviewing veterans in an after-school program. They document their stories and they write up their stories in a book that the students published called Since You Asked. The video interviews and the books are sent to the Library of Congress for preservation. Veterans are honored and the students are learning writing skills and public speaking skills and project management. Veteran William Gehring gained valuable experience from working on the project. 
I was hands-on in the interview process uh, with the camera. I set up the interview. I asked the questions. I was down there taking notes. Paradise Valley Community College and Glendale Community College worked together on this project, which culminated in a reception and book signing event. Today, the community can purchase a book and they can meet the veterans and have them sign the pages of their story. Vietnam veteran Alfredo Gutierrez expressed the commitment and camaraderie that comes from military service. Our contract with America was they're going to call. And when the call comes, we're going to go. And when we go, we're going to do what it is we were, we were trained to do. That war, Vietnam, we left 50,000, 50,000 soldiers behind. But that created a brotherhood and today a sisterhood that never goes away. I felt it. I got goosebumps. It was it was awe inspiring at times. Some of the stories that I heard or that, you know, I was tasked with having to, to write down. Experts say that some veterans struggle with their memories of war. When veterans get to share their stories with somebody who's actually listening to them, it can be a very healing process. The Veterans Heritage Project started in 2004 as an after-school program by history teacher Barbara Hatch. It's now in 24 schools throughout Arizona with the hopes of going nationwide in the future. Our goal is to reach 3,000 veterans and students by 2020. Jose Isayera served 14 years in the Navy with several deployments and said he values hearing other veterans' stories from past wars. Hearing what they've said in comparison to what I've heard in media, news, especially nowadays, I think it's important that people hear straight from the veteran who was there. Isayera was grateful to have his story included in the book. I very much encourage any vet to participate in this project and uh, tell their story. Let it be told. Let it uh, be archived. For more information about the Veterans Heritage Project, visit their website at veteransheritage.org. I'm Deanne Kincaid for Maricopa Now. They call me Maxi, but I prefer a tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me, now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me, I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. dreamt of being on stage as a performer or be recognized as an artist or filmmaker. Dreams of being in the spotlight are coming to reality for students of the Maricopa Community Colleges. The top performing and visual artists are being awarded and celebrated here at the Herberger Theater. Welcome to Spirit of the Arts. I'm Andrea Zakshevsky. Maricopa students are honored at the annual Artist of Promise Talent Showcase. The Maricopa Community College's Chancellor Award winners feature performances from students in the visual arts, choreography, creative writing, theater, music, and film. The students have an opportunity to display their skills at the Herberger Theater, a top performance venue in downtown Phoenix where some of the top artists perform. The award for the art form of music composition goes to Alejandro Pernod. I got into music back in high school. Uh, in my soft, sophomore year, I started playing guitar in like punk rock bands. Alejandro describes how it felt when he found out he won for Artists of Promise. It literally felt incredible from a step up. As I said, I came from a punk rock background and like in three years I was able to win a competition. The piece he composed is called Destitute of Perception Becoming Clarity, which is about moments in life of joy and sadness. 
you leave me these little notes on my pillow. The so. first place winner for female theater actor goes to Cedar Cody Eileen. Her love of performance goes back to just two years old. Cedar tells us what surprises her most about acting. You have to pull from everyday experiences and things that you've felt yourself, and it's very hard to detach yourself from that while still feeling the emotion and being realistic and believable. Cedar attributes her success to the theater program at Mesa Community College. The theater department there is incredible. They have so many opportunities. Even if you've never designed anything before, you can get on a main stage performance and actually get to design. It's really cool that they let you have the opportunity to try everything. Cedar plans to continue pursuing her degree and possibly open her own theater someday. Everything you do irritates me. The award for solo instrumental flute goes to Lily Andrioli. I've played other instruments, but I do prefer playing the flute because it's it's just a gorgeous instrument, you know, like you, there's many genres you can play on it. When I really get in the zone, it's I'm able to, you know, communicate through my instrument and you know, it's just Playing is an interesting experience because, you know, depending on the piece, like sometimes you can have an extreme emotional connection to a piece. The selection she's playing is called Syrinx by Claude Debussy, which is about a water nymph named Syrinx. The Greek god Pan falls in love with her and pursues her and she doesn't return the feelings. Lily has been happy with the program at Glendale Community College. It's a really well put together program for music. and. I've bloomed, really, since I came there um, in high school. I'm a completely different musician. The award for media arts were given to students in categories such as documentary and animation. The winners of the visual arts were on exhibition in the lobby of the Herbrooker. Five of the pieces will be selected to go on to a national exhibition. Categories on display include ceramics, oil paintings, and photography. Instruction through the community colleges help to elevate art to a whole new level. May these students' work continue to inspire current and future artists. Classes in the performing and visual arts are offered for all skill levels for beginner, intermediate, and advanced level. Make your dreams a reality by attending classes in the Maricopa Community Colleges for superb instruction at an affordable price. If you're inspired by the talent of these artists, perhaps you might consider taking classes. For more information, go to maricopa.edu forward slash arts. C for Vets is a nonprofit organization that raises funds to support a number of special education and employment initiatives that address the needs of community college veterans. Jesus Hernandez takes us to one of their annual fundraisers. C for Vets, a nonprofit organization, continues to advance its educational and employment initiative for veterans attending Maricopa Community Colleges. Through its annual golf tournament, now in its fourth year, and other activities, the organization announced it has raised $75,000 to help establish programs and services supporting veterans. This year's golf tournament was held at the TPC Scottsdale Stadium Golf Course, home of the PGA's waste management open. I think it's phenomenal what the community colleges and organizations like C for Vets are doing for our vets. I think that plays the key role in, in veteran success in, in the community college and, and the universities. As difficult as it might be to play the TPC Scottsdale Stadium golf course, the challenge did not compare to the difficulties some veterans faced as they transitioned into civilian life. Stephen Stewart was a Marine. It was definitely rough transitioning. Uh, being able to support my family. I had a wife and kids when I got out too, so it was pretty rough working side jobs and trying to go to school at the same time. Stewart says it was the encouragement and advice he received at a community college veteran center that helped him with his plans for the future and his family. I hope to be able to offer him the same uh, security we had when I was in the service actually. Uh, you know, they, we've gone a few years without insurance and things like that. Tyler Johnson is another Marine we caught up with as he tried to apply his golf skills on a tough course. He spent eight years in the Marines. He joined right out of high school. It was quite the experience, helped me grow up a lot, learned a lot of things. 
Uh, met a lot of great Americans. Johnson attended Paradise Valley Community College and recently graduated with a degree in electrical engineering. He credits the support he received at a veteran center for his accomplishments. Uh, I think they're instrumental to success of veterans. Um, like I said, it's difficult getting out. You know, there's no one to guide you and tell you, you know, what you're supposed to do. As the veterans and others participating in the C4 Vets fourth annual golf tournament maneuvered through the course, the honored guest had some words of encouragement. One of the biggest things that you have coming out of the military, or you should have coming out of the military, is accountability. And that basically means that you learn to take ownership of everything in your, in your hemisphere. From the conversations with the veterans playing in this golf tournament, it's clear. C for Vets is providing veterans a valuable service through its educational and employment initiatives at the Maricopa Community Colleges. Jesus Hernandez for Maricopa Now. At Estrella Mountain Community College, one program is giving students the tools to provide quality health care to patients who struggle with language barriers. Cynthia Skadef has the story. At the Southwest Skills Center, students are learning how to communicate between health care providers and patients. Currently, I've been teaching here at Estrella Mountain at the Southwest Skills Center for two years. The program covers medical terminology, both in English and Spanish, techniques, code of ethics, standards of practice for the medical interpreting field. The program focuses teaching bilingual nurses how to discuss health issues with patients and patients' families with language barriers. Especially that they're in the hospitals and sometimes they can't get the um, meaning across from the doctor and the patient, I want to be able to help. And I see the patients at the hospital when they see me and they see that I speak Spanish, I notice in their face, like they're like, oh, great. Mira, estos son mis issues. This is, this is what I have. I want to ask this. Like they're able to ask more questions and they're happy, like, you know. The focus is to increase understanding in the Latino and Hispanic culture. Instructors say effective communication increases better care for these patients. We have many terms that they're so broad. For example, patients, they go to the hospital and say, well, me siento empachado. If that can be anything, like Hispanic community, Latino community, no, the un empacho puede ser un dolor de estómago o puede ser uh, ácido, puede ser muchas cosas. So you have to know what this person culturally is talking about. What I hope to see in the future with this program and my career is just to eliminate the misinterpretation. You know, eliminate those gaps that they're between the patient and the doctors, patients and nurses. After some class instructions, this is the lab where the students will come in and practice real life scenarios that will prepare them for their future jobs. Hello, Mrs. Munoz, thank you for coming. One will be the doctor, another one the interpreter, and another one the patient and the interpreter will practice between the patient and the doctor. This program helps students prepare for a career in healthcare services. The program incorporates internships to help all students prepare for their final examination, as well to obtain their certificate of completion. Students that have been hired maybe a month after um, completing their externship at the hospitals, there are several 
agencies that contact us whenever they need students or they have they need graduates for, for example, telephonic interpreting. There's a high need for that. The program is offered two Saturdays per school year, as well as weekly classes. If you or anyone you know is interested or have any questions, please visit this link. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Cynthia Esqueda. This is the time of year we celebrate the students who have worked so hard to achieve their educational goals. Lily Antonini takes us to Maricopa Community College's 2017 Hispanic Convocation. With great enthusiasm, dozens of Hispanic students received their associate degree at the Phoenix Convention Center during the Hispanic Convocation 2017. Maria Harper Merinick, Chancellor of Maricopa Community Colleges, said she was proud of the students. For us to have 300 students and all their families, they made this Hispanic celebration awesome. We celebrate the dedication and discipline of the students for reaching this goal, and it is great for the community colleges. Emilio Roman graduated from Estrella Mountain Community College. He sang the national anthem. Can you see? Emilio wants to be a Mexican singer, but he recognizes the value of education. My dream has always been to be a singer, but my parents said we have to look for plan B or have a backup like computer management. Mirna Lerma is the first in her family to graduate. This certification motivates her to continue her career as a lawyer. I'm working in a law office, but in the future, I would like to transfer to ASU and get a bachelor's or more. Hispanic veterans were an important part of this ceremony. Oscar Barron was proud to graduate and serve in the United States Army. For me, being Hispanic and finishing college is a great honor and pride for my parents. I'm glad that veterans can reach their goal because it's not easy to go to war. It's different from what we learn in war. One by one, students receive their diploma while being cheered by family and friends for this achievement. The Chancellor of Maricopa Community Colleges emphasized that the importance of this certification as the first step towards a professional career. We motivate them to celebrate this diploma as their first step in their professional career. You cannot think that you are all done with this diploma. Now is when you really start. Maria said that the Maricopa Community Colleges are proud to promote Hispanic pride. We cannot forget where we come from, our roots, the language we speak, family, and the community that support us. Even if we reach our goal in life, you can never forget that you are Hispanic, and Hispanic with pride. A celebration that encourages education in tomorrow's leaders. For Maricopa Now, Lilian Tonini. And that concludes our show. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for a great lineup of shows, including Inside Maricopa Sports and Enfoque into Futuro. Also, check out our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv and click on DustTube. DustTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. Until next time, make it a great day. Don't touch that remote. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports, Infoki and Tufaturo, and our daily community calendar update, Campus Calendar. <laughs>